we're actually pleased to welcome to the show Steve Brock. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Hey, Steve, that was pretty amazing being out there with you and um, yeah, you know, kind of seeing all the different stories and putting them all together. Uh, what are your thoughts from from the experience? It's inspiring, to be frank. Um, not that a lot of not, not not that a lot of name actors are out there, but quite a few are, and they realize that uh, what happens to what I call the the ninety eight percent is just trickles all the way through the entire industry. Um, so they're there to protect themselves too, but they're there to speak for us, uh, and I and that's inspiring. And it's also inspiring to see how many uh, members of SAG and uh, SAG after and the Writers Guild are out there just trying to just get uh, the best contract possible. You, you know, um, one of the questions we were asking people, um, well, we asked them a, a slew of things. We asked, we asked them about AI. We asked them about why they personally were there. Um, we always ended the interviews with, you know, what do you think is happening next or what, what, how does this end? And I think, you know, the vast amount of people we talked to, they it didn't seem like they they had a particular answer of how this was going to end. They knew that we were going to keep at we're going to keep at it until it's over, whatever it takes. And I liked right. and even you particularly looking in the camera and saying this we're not going to stop until we have something fair, until there's right. justice. And that's I think that's the way organizing works. I don't think anybody went out there or no one's out there right now just just to you know. Oh, let's. This is the thing to do. No, we we're all affected. We all see that this could go, uh, you know, go the long haul. But we don't care. We're out there together. And I, I feel that energy. Do you do you agree? I agree. Um, and what's what's interesting is that even non union actors are out there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, when I I, I I I did a protest over Disney a week before that, and I met a lot of non union actors that were out there supporting their fellow actors, non-union uh, writers supporting their, those. That's interesting to me is that even people who are not in the union yet, who on odds are would like to be part of the union are, are out there with, they're not even getting protected by the union yet. Uh, well, to a degree, they are still are, which is one of the great things about our union and the WGA is that even if you're non-union, uh, there is some protection on set, even by the unions for those people too. So yeah, it's, it's, that's, what's inspiring uh, about that. And my, and also there's some degree of exasperation as well. Mm. Um, yeah. Where it's, the AMPTP represents the CEOs of these, uh, these companies and oftentimes, because of that, because of that collectiveness, they don't have the we don't have the opportunity to negotiate directly with Bob Iger, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, slowly, I think the walls are crumbling because um, I did read Bob Iger is willing to come to the table um, uh, outside of that structure. And I, I think that uh, after the last actor strike, there was a lot of individual contracts signed with different um, like different studios. Like there is a WB contract or CW contract out there. And so we'll have people. I, I predict that Apple will be the first um, streaming company to come to the table to, to break ranks because mm. they're not only a media company. Um, and they are losing money anyway on Apple TV. So uh, they don't have anything to lose by coming to the table. So I, and I don't think they have any loyalty either uh, because it's Tim Cook. He's not, he's, he's not a media guy. He's, he's the marketing guy for a tech company. So those are the kinds of things I think walls will crumble down slowly until the, until all the wall crumbles down. Then again, I don't think that's going to be soon. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have some intransigence on in, in the AMPTP, people that, that, where they just don't uh, respect labor. Um, us, they don't. They think they can do this without us. Mm -hmm. And when you see things like um, apparently 
Disney BFX artists are unionizing now. Um, they, Disney, Marvel, all those companies, Star Wars, they the, the VFX people are now unionizing, so they'll be part of IATSE. These things are happening, and they are going to affect the industry. But I think the more we stand together uh, as union strong, as they say, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the better chance we have of, of, of breaking through this and, and have, having a fair deal and, and future proofing our careers, all these things, those are the things to think about when I'm walking on, uh, on the line and yeah. you know, we fight, we know they're going to fight back, but we still fight. Yeah, exactly. Now, I know you were you were telling me personally about some of the experiences you had gone to Disney, like you said. And so, um, did you go anywhere else besides Disney? Well, I went Disney and went Netflix, um, mm -hmm. and that's so far that's all I've done. Okay. Uh, so, what do you, what is your um, impression on the conditions of? Because I I think I I heard the thing you had mentioned that there was uh, an issue out at Disney where they were you know cutting. No, that's down. actually Universal. Oh, that was Universal. Okay. Um, can you, tell us, tell, can you tell us what happened? Weird, they, yeah. NBC yeah. Universal did a couple of anti anti strike um, moves. Um, they uh, cut down all the shade uh, in where uh, protesters, where where union protesters were, by taking down most of the most of the leaves. Now, problem that they that they said that it was just uh, their annual thing, but that annual thing for those trees doesn't happen until late September, early October. Right. So um, the city caught them and they paid a fine. It wasn't a large fine, but it was fine. And then there was a thing where they um, decided to do uh, construction on the sidewalk. Oh, my God. Um, so after uh, sag after put out a um, petition, not just where non-union, just like the viewing public uh, signed, I think it was almost 300,000 signatures. Um, Universal was forced to repave the sidewalk and now they have tents up. So enough um, public pressure uh, helps, which is something that I, uh, that I knew. And but it came to the forefront for me is that the more support we get as writers, actors, even um, directors from the people who consume the product um, that we pr help produ to produce, the stronger we are mm -hmm. because um, oftentimes the stereotype is that it, the people who are out there protesting, oh, come on, you're actors or you're writers, you're in the entertainment industry, you must be making a bunch of money. Um, like I said, when I called the 98% um, earlier, that's um, the, st the statistics are accurate there. 2% of actors of, of paid union members are actually making a living or more off i mean i mean a good living off of this career the rest of us are struggling like crazy we are the blue collar of hollywood and for the viewing public to not step forward and and just consume and consume and consume that's just going to teach uh streamers and network that they can get away with it. So the more we get the viewing public on our side, the better off we are. I hundred percent agree. And I, I think Steve, that um, if anything, this process, hopefully I think has taught, taught us all that we have to keep our eyes open. We have to keep our ears open. We have to stay curious because a lot of times, and you know this about our industry, like we, we have a tendency to, kind of be in our little bubble here um especially last three years with covid and everything we kind of you know kind of stick to our own thing figure it out we always and we're always good at that anyways artists uh, by nature we're just good at kind of maneuvering and steering and i i think that when we do that though it, that's a skill that we've learned over many years our whole lives really we learn the skill of maneuvering from job to job like you're saying even the high paying jobs they still have a beginning middle and end we have to find the yeah. next job so we, we're by, by nature, we're wired this way. And so I think that it kind of that that type of skill we, we all kind of developed as a collective. I feel like it's kind of it's kind of worked against us 
uh, up until this moment. This is a moment of, of, of where we can test this on ourselves. But I think right. uh, the reason we got here um, might have been avoided. I, and this is just my opinion, but I think we could have maybe avoided it if we didn't allow that skill we were so good at to take to take center stage for us over these last three years. If we had stayed a little more curious, a little more on edge about sure. the conditions. Like, for example, when you were seeing about when the, when we started doing these home auditions, I remember them telling us this is only temporary. And I, I was like, this isn't this isn't just because of COVID. This COVID was the excuse to do that. Why yeah. would why the hell would they willingly go back to the way it was? There was no reason unless we right. unless we forced them to. Does that right. make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, and that's what one of the things that's on the table is either uh, is in person that the option for people to choose in person. Uh, that's some one of the things that SAG proposed is that if there's a self tape and you choose to do um, either a Zoom audition or an in-person audition. That is going. SAG feels that should be, uh, you know, offered. Uh, and, and of course, AMPTP is against it, but that's just how that is. I was talking to a friend of mine who brought this up, and the other thing he said was that's the difference between us and the, and the upper class and the rich class is that. When they go, when those guys go to school, they learn finance. They learn all this stuff mm. that keeps them going there. Um, high school doesn't te teach finance. High school doesn't teach us how to serve, how to live in this society. And I think that's a part of the problem because when we get to working age, we do the same stuff. We keep you nose know, to the grindstone. Uh, you do um, gig economy. So do I. Those are the things we're, we're just, we're hustling all the time. Mm -hmm. And, and we were taught that from kindergarten really. Um, and so I think that because of that, when we're nose to the grindstone means our eyes aren't ahead of us. Mm -hmm. That's I mean. So I, so I we're, not, look, we're not looking at what's in front of us that we should be yeah. because we're looking down. And this is a great commentary, what you're saying about society as a whole and the, the difference between that upper echelon and everyone else. It's a great commentary. I'm actually going further about our particular industry and saying we have it even worse. And I'll give you I'll give you an example. Um, we have it because you, you can relate to this. We have it worse because as actors, as artists, we walk into rooms and we're we are already wired to walk in that room and do exactly what they tell us to do. They say, hey, get down on all fours and bark like a dog if you want to be in this Netflix, this $90 right. million dollar Netflix film. Okay, mm -hmm. where do you want, where do you want well, the, where do you want the floor to be? You know, like yeah. that's that's how we're trained. Whatever well, they tell that's us. That's how the Weinstein uh, yeah. thing shaped out, is that it, it's to a much more serious degree. A lot of people who were um had producers well, like Weinstein saying that you yeah. are going to do this, you know, if you want to have a career, or otherwise. I'm going to tell everybody not to hire you kind of a thing. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with you there. And we, and the amount of hustle that we have to do as actors, as writers, we hustle so hard because it, it is hard. And we're always in competition, even though we have friends who are actors and we're supposed to, you know, bond together. We're supposed to come together and support each other. But the, but the problem is, is that because we are set against each other on a regular basis, we can't consistently have that mindset. Well, now, I've here's, tried how, here's how we can work to, to solve that. I say we use this time right now as an opportunity to, to inform us about how powerful our own voices can be when we get together. Because that's what organizing is. Organizing is... Right. People coming together. It's power and numbers. So what you're talking about is here's what we're doing right now. SAG, WGA, everybody together. The 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 lesson right. learned is we moving forward is power and numbers and be curious before it's too late. Because if, if we're curious right. enough, we could we can spot out that red flag in advance. We can see when that oh. contract is put in front of us that says, uh sign, oh, just sign here for this, just your likeness for AI for oh. the rest of eternity. So, so we, we yeah, can this happened to me. Things. I told you about this. This happened to me. What you're talking about. No, I know. About. That's why I'm I'm talking. I'm saying we have to be more curious about what right. is that paperwork being put in front of us? What well, are they like, not telling so us? What's what's I, not being said? I, I was um background on a very large streaming service 
that deals more in fantasy and science fiction, shall we say. They put me on on the big this big volume set, and they told me that they were doing this because in case that I was on stage and on the you know, on set in the in camera, that they could add stuff to me. You know, like I changed things in the costume and stuff. And I willingly did it. I, I thought this was cool. And the truth of the matter is, um, I believe I may have signed my likeness away to, to start with. Or to, I, I to actually, start. I have to say, I, I, I suspect you might have, my friend. But hey, you, use your story to prevent others yeah. from doing the same thing. Because we have to know what's, we have to be extra curious what's happening, especially when things are going so fast and, and paperwork's being thrown in front of us. And it's the things that they're not saying. And I think that this, if anything, this moment for us, all artists right now needs to be a moment where we wake up and say, let's, let's get out in the streets before they tell us to. That's, that's what I'm saying. And well, I, I think get, whatever that looks like, whatever getting out in the street looks like, it shouldn't be, only when you get an email telling you to. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. We need to be ahead of it. So, yeah, I mean, and, and yeah. the thing is that we're going to learn during this process of this strike is not just that. We're going to learn to uh, to advocate for ourselves. Steve Brock, senior correspondent with Sherwood Players, actor, writer. Thanks for being part of this movement with us and being on the show today. Absolutely. And uh, where else would I be? 